evidence based management of ddh at the end of the presentation we should be able to define ddh identify the risk factors outline the algorithm of, for uh, screening explain the clinical picture based on specific age group i'll be shortly describing the findings in ust not more than uh, two slides enumerate the various treatment options for specific age groups and describe relevant pathophysiology especially after a certain age so what is the definition the spectrum of abnormal hip development it is a spectrum of abnormal hip development during infancy and early development it is the definition given by uh, american association of pediatricians what is a spectrum the spectrum ranges from a normal hip to a teratologic hip teratologic means the hip is dislocated in utero associated with some neurologic neuromuscular conditions in between we have got a uh, hip with radiological abnormalities a dislocatable hip dislocated hip but it can be reduced dislocated but non reducible hip what is the incidence uh, in western literature it is around 8 percentage if you do ultrasound in all live births uh, dysplasia is seen in around 2 percentage in western population and a dislocated hip is identified in 0.1 percentage the indian literature says the dysplasia is around 2 percentage so it is around 1/10 uh, that of western incidence left hip is more commonly affected because most probably due to left occipital anterior position now this condition is called ddh not cdh because we have to include certain disorders in which infants are normal at birth but in whom hip dysplasia or dislocation subsequently develop ddh is actually a packaging disorder so if you see another packaging disorder like torticollis metatarsus adductus always look at the hip it is also associated with oligohydramnios according to aap these are the risk factors so you can easily remember by uh, remembering the f that is first born fetal malposition breech presentation female uh, family history female patients left sided foreign factors like swaddling but recently american association of orthopedic surgeons considers these three as the risk factors the fetal position which is breech family history and history of instability if the, there are risk factors actually that is an indication for doing imaging study these are the recommendations given by aap uh, as far as ddh is concerned all newborns should be screened for ddh but routine usc is not needed if otolony or barlow test is positive refer to a pediatric orthopedic sur surgeon or a pediatric orthopedic surgeon triple diapers are not recommended if equivocal re examine after 2 weeks if still equivocal do an ultrasound so when to examine the hip hip should be examined at every well baby visit if ddh is suspected do a focused hip examination so what do you mean by focused hip examination in a less than 14 weeks old baby the first test you are supposed to do is otolony test so hip is out to begin with the hip is out so you are supposed uh, trying to reduce it how will you reduce it gradually abduct abduct the hip a b d abduct a positive result means clunk not a click barlow test means hip is in the joint in the beginning but can be pushed backwards so you you abduct a d d u c t abduct and push backwards this is to assess if the hip is subluxatable so you can see that there is some limitation of abduction in the left side so that is another clinical sign suggestive of ddh in nutshell look for the limitation of abduction in flexion do the otolony test do the barlow test this is the focused hip examination 
I, mean, I won't be discussing much about ultrasound. What you are uh, doing is a coronal flexion view, and what we are getting is an AP view X ray. Uh, so, uh, if you remember the X ray, we can see that uh, the head won't be visible uh, in the X ray. That is why we are doing the ultrasound. We can see the triradiate cartilage uh, as a gap. You have got the ilia crest, and you can imagine th three lines. They, they are the gluteal muscles. Then we have got the ischium. The, if you remember that, the reading of the ultrasound will be easier. We can see that the ilia crest is there, and you have got the bony acetabulum. Are you able to see my arrow? Uh, then we have got the head beneath. And here we have got the gluteal muscles. We have got the gluteus minimus, medius, and the maximus. So if we do a do draw a vertical line along the iliac crest, uh, we and another line parallel to the uh, bony acetabulum, we get the alpha angle. And that should be normally more than 60 degree. Beta angle is the angle between the vertical line and the gluteal muscles. A big beta is a bad sign. We are supposed to get less than 55 degree beta. So why treat uh, DDH? That is to achieve concentric reduction of the femoral head to allow normal development of the hip. The, in the first six treatment, there is only one treatment. That is Pavlik harness. We have got a chest strap, shoulder strap, stirrups, and anterior and posterior uh, straps. The anterior strap will keep the hip flexed around 100 degrees. We give a gravity assisted abduction using the posterior strap. At three weeks, we are supposed to do ultrasound to make sure that the head is inside. Then continue this for six weeks. After six weeks, ultrasound has to be done uh, to reassess the hip. Then if everything is fine, take x-ray at four months, one year, and annually. Hip is out at three weeks. What will you do? Uh, you stop giving uh, public harness. You give a rigid abduction orthosis. One example is von Rosen splint. So this is a rigid one. More than 14 weeks children, the clinical findings will be asymmetric thigh fault or gluteal faults, limitation of abduction inflection, shortened leg. That, is, that sign is called galeasi sign. Uh, if, when the, if the child is walking, the walking will be with external rotation. There will be tunnel bug gait. If it is bilateral, there will be bad link, hyperlordosis, and limit, bilateral limited abduction. X-ray, if we draw a horizontal line along the triradiate cartilage and a vertical line along the uh, lateral border of the acetabulum, uh, the hip, the head is supposed to be lying inside. And the acetabular index should be uh, smaller. And the Shenton uh, line should not be broken. Treatment after six months to two years. It is difficult because of the pathological changes. What are the pathological changes? There will be intraarticular obstacles and extraarticular obstacles. Intraarticular obstacles include something called pulvinar. Pulvinar is a fibro fatty tissue lying inside the acetabulum. And the labrum will be inverted, ligament teres will be elongated, and transverse acetabular ligament will be pulled upwards. The extra articular obstacle, mainly it is the iliosoas. So the treatment is traction for three weeks, followed by close reduction. The hip is then maintained in a hip spiker cast within the safe zone of Ramsey. Arthrogram is, if available, will aid the reduction. If uh, the close reduction is failing, we have to do something called open reduction. Three such casts are to be given, each for six weeks. Uh, treatment after two years is again much more complicated uh, because of the acetabular and femoral changes. So the treatment is primary open reduction with femoral shortening to decrease the pressure inside the hip and pelvic osteotomy to reorient the acetabulum. 
this is because of the various acetabular and femoral changes. The acetabular roof will become oblique, it will become flat with thick medial wall and become antiverted. These changes are reversible up to the age of four years. Muscles and ligaments will become shortened. Femoral changes are relatively less, but will become smaller and the head will be deformed. <coughs> so the acetabular osteotomy mainly we have three, three uh, osteotomies. One is Salter osteotomy, Dega osteotomy and Pemberton osteotomy. These are done to reorient the acetabulum. These are the three definitive indications for doing ultrasound. An equivocal re-examination finding after two weeks of initial equivocal examination. Family history and or breech uh, females. Follow up during harness treatment or hip spike are cast. These are the uh, take home messages. Early detection of DDH is the key in the management of DDH. Identify the risk factors. We should know how to do a focused hip examination. Ultrasound is indicated for at risk patients and when focus examination is equivocal. Treatment is based on age, younger the age, and milder the spectrum, better the results. Thank you.